Live inside the William H. Pitt Center on the campus of Sacred Heart University, NEC Front Row presents Sacred Heart University Basketball. And today, it's one of their great rivals against the in-state CCSU Blue Devils. Hi everybody, I'm Randy Brosheum alongside Rob Coloni, and thanks for joining us tonight for a rivalry renewed between the Blue Devils and the Pioneers, Rob. CCSU owns the all-time meeting 35 to 18, and they've won four straight. The Pioneers come in with a record of 0-1 in conference. The Blue Devils with a record of 0-1 in conference. They got the number one preseason team on Saturday at St. Francis, Brooklyn, and of course the Pioneers falling in a tough one, 73-71. They get the number two ranked team in the preseason tonight in CCSU, but they come in with a seven game losing streak, a different Blue Devil looking team than was originally expected at the beginning of the season when the coaches uh, made their selection. So uh, it is a CCSU team hurting right now at two and 12. Uh, they are without their leading scorer, Kalen Cumberlander, who's out injured. He had scored double figures, seven of 12 games. So an opportunity for the Pioneers to try to rebound from a tough loss. They got great contributions the other day, ultimately a loss. They'll look for those same contributions led by Evan Kelly. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, and you, you touched upon the lack of presence and play from Central Connecticut. Obviously, Kyle Vanalis is out, dismissed from the team as well, and he was only 451 points shy of the all-time record at Central Connecticut, so that's a big loss as well. Turn the page and look at the Pioneers and you look at Evan Kelly. What a profound impact he has had on the team this year. He's one of two Pioneers to score in double figures at least nine times, joining freshman standout and teammate Kane Broom. He's second on the team and 11th in the conference, averaging 13 points per game. And he's especially fun to watch, folks, when you're here at home because he scores 16.3 points per game here at the William H. Pitt Center on Coach Bike Court. And you know he himself is only uh, a few points away from amassing 1,000 on his career. He has 938 coming into tonight, and he would be just the 38th Sacred Heart player all time to, c to pick up 1,000 points. He is certainly one player to watch for tonight. Keep an eye on Steve Glowiak as well. The New Britain native, for whatever reason, tends to light it up against his hometown team. He's averaging 20 points over the last four games against Central Connecticut, including a 27-point performance last year on seven three-pointers. So we'll see the Pioneers and the Blue Devils getting ready for the opening tip in game two of the conference schedule. The Pioneers coming in with their record of 6-8, and 0-1 in NEC play. The Blue Devils scuffling 2-12, and and they're 0-1 in NEC play. Sacred Heart and Central Connecticut in an interstate rivalry renewed. Coming up next on NEC Front Row. It's out on the backcourt, and here's Kane Broom averaging 14 points a game to Davon Barnett with a good take, and Barnett, who's at 10 point on the jumper in the lane, seven foul zone, can't get the layup to go. The Pioneers, all for their last five from the floor. Here's Mobley, the take and the make. Matt Mobley. 4-2, the Blue Devils. Here's a three from Kane Broom, and the Pioneers go back on top. God, he's fun to watch, isn't he? Told him, we haven't seen a guard play above the rim as well as Kane Broom has. And here in his freshman year, there's another take as he gets up for the lay-in. Nowitzki off the bench for the rebound. He and Jordan Allen and Steve Glowiak on the floor off the bench, and there's Jordan Allen off the good look from... Gaetano finds Kelly, who feeds... Nowitzki down low, open for the easy lay-in. Nowitzki. Broom to Glowiak, catch and shoot for three. Steve Glowiak sees CCS. Very good on the defensive glass this year. No look inside for foul zone, who throws down the dunk. And he got fouled, count the basket, and Tevin foul zone goes to the line after a thundering dunk. Swarm the ball carrier. Drakeford, he finds a trailing Andrade. Woo. That gets blocked. Kelly throws it along for Glowiak for the lay-in. Here's Mobley turning it over. Evan Kelly the steal. Throws it ahead for Glowiak again. The reverse layup. It's Steve. So unstoppable in every facet of the game. He is so quick right now defensively. He's locked in offensively as well. That's not a good call. Rebound. Pioneers into the front court. He finds a cutting cane broom past the pack from the reverse. <laughs> oh. As Mobley puts one up for three. No good. Foul zone. The rebound. Home run pass ahead to Gaetano. And he is rejected. Five on the floor. Drake for the no look to the wing for Peel. Underneath for Andrade for the lay in. Really nice. 
Falzone for three. Come on, how about Tevin Falzone? I think he heard you. <laughs> One dribble. Mobley in transition, pulls up for three. And Matt Mo Glowiak open from Broom for three, and good. Glowiak has 12, and the Pioneers get three right back. Drakeford, what a pass underneath. He did find Mobley who dropped it. Glowiak in transition, the finger roll. Hopefully just a grimace of exhaustion and nothing else. Mobley. What a shot. Pioneers work the perimeter, the three captains. Gaetano turns it over, stolen by Mobley. Mobley all the way, good and one. Gaetano commits. One hands it away. Mobley thought about the catch and shoot. Now off the screen, a contested three is good. Mustafa Jones. A three, that's Matt Mobley, the three. Kane Broom looking for the answer. And he drills it. Big three from Kane Broom. And a timeout call. Kevin Seymour in transition. Matt Mobley way downtown, and Mobley has 26. Talky talk. And the shot clock is a disaster. <laughs> um. And that's a good three for Matt Mobley from the corner. A little more solid offensively late in the game. I thought we had some unforced turnovers. Um, but it's so hard. You know, it's funny. Brad just came over, our associate athletic director, and he said, good win. He goes, it's hard to win games. It's hard to win league games. So I think you got to appreciate that and keep that in perspective. And obviously, he's been around for a long time. He understands it's tough, especially against a, a Coach Dickerman uh, coach team that they're relentless, they're gonna keep coming at you. And they, and they did, they didn't quit. Matt Mobley was a stud in the second half. But I'm so proud of my, guy, my guys, because we really defended for the whole game, held them under 40%, and we rebounded the ball. Something we haven't done great in the last few games. So we made progress, obviously thrilled with Tevin. Kane is just, Kane, we take him for granted. I mean, he's just, he, you know, he. I, I, I was thinking, boy, Kane was just average today. I mean, if it, 16 points, seven rebounds and four assists is average for, yeah. for a freshman. Boy, oh boy, the standards have changed. So I'm thrilled for, with our team. I, I, I'm pleased, and uh, most importantly, we got a win. We needed to get a win in the league, and we're one and one, and uh, with with a tough road game coming up. You know, it's so funny. Randy and I talked about that too. Wow, Kane very quietly with 16 points, but it seemed like every time you put that high screen for him, he was taking that pull-up jumper and doing a really nice job. As you look at Central Connecticut, and you talked about Howie Dickerman, when you play against Howie Dickerman, who I know was a big mentor for you, he was at your induc induction press conference when you became the head coach of the Pioneers. It's been two years since the Sacred Heart team has beaten a Howie Dickerman team. What is it like to play against a man that you coached with and under, and, and what's it like to actually get a win against him? Well, I mean, obviously a win against anybody. Central Connecticut every game except when they play us. So I'd prefer not to play the game. We stopped playing Stony Brook because Steve Peichel's a good friend. I won't play Niagara because Chris Casey's a good friend. So I don't like playing against friends because I root for them. So unfortunately, they're in the league. Uh, so once the game starts, you know, you're just competing. But uh, if I could avoid this game every year, I would. Just the Northeast Conference won't let it. So, you know, I love him to death. He's the reason I, I am where I am. So, uh, you know, between Coach Bike and Coach D, uh, that's why I'm here. So, um, I'm going to root for them every other game, and you know they've caught a lot of bad breaks, you know a lot of injuries. They lose a uh, best player in the league, probably the best guard in the league early in the year. Uh, then they lose their starting point guard, and then they lose their first guard off the bench. So, you know we're fortunate we played a shorthanded team. The rest of the league is as well. Uh, if they somehow can get healthy, they're, they're going to be fine. So I, 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 quite honestly, I don't like the game. I'm thrilled we won, but I, I you know every my heart breaks every time he loses a game. Tough turnaround for you guys as you go on the road on Thursday. You're back here at home on Saturday. What's the mindset and the message to the team moving forward? <laughs> stay focused. Look, stay focused. Keep getting better at what we're doing. I think we have a good formula, and let's improve in certain areas individually and as a team. You know, Tevin was Tevin's day today. He stepped up, but it's been Jordan's day. It's been Phillip's day. You know, may maybe it'll be Davon's day. So different guys will step up on different days so that, that everybody's got to be ready and who knows maybe it's a guy off the bench that hasn't played much someone gets hurt someone gets in foul trouble so that's the message is please with where we are but we can be better we can play better we can finish that game better so that's definitely it but um, we're thrilled when we're excited and we're going to play our first road contest and I think some of the new guys are going to see it you know on the road is a tough so we got our hands full with LIU I don't know what they did tonight but we got our hands full so but before we go, I just want to say hello to a couple people. One is Cheryl Madison, our biggest fan. 
She's been sick. I hope she's listening to the game. She hasn't been here. She's been in and out of the hospital, but we're all thinking about you, and we're all praying for her. And, and to my to my wife and, and two kids who couldn't make it because of basketball practice, game's over, time to go to bed. So um, actually, you know, four probably biggest Sacred Heart fans in the country, the Latina family and Cheryl Madison. So good night, guys, and, and uh, you know, thanks for everything. Well, there you have it, Randy. The Pioneers get back to 500 in the league at 1-1. One and one. They'll go on the road on Thursday, back home on Saturday. And coach says keep fighting and kids go to bed. Back to Randy. Thanks a lot, Rob.